Hello, this is AngularJS and SharePoint for 2019. My name is Chris Douglas. I am a senior SharePoint developer for ECS. I have been programming in SharePoint for over 12 years, and I welcome you to the 2019 version of AngularJS and SharePoint. This is for a presentation I will be giving this Saturday at SharePoint Saturday in Virginia Beach. Hopefully I will finish all of these videos in time for Saturday. This year I have the opportunity to do two one hour sessions. So in the first hour I am going to cover all of the fundamentals of working with AngularJS with SharePoint the reason why you would be using AngularJS and outline all of the components necessary to do the application that I'm showing you. At the end of the first hour, I will show you where you can download all of the code that I'll be presenting today and you can study it at your leisure. If you stay for the second hour of the course, I will explain in detail all the code components that make up my application. Since you're watching this online, you're going to have the opportunity to watch all of the videos for my entire two-hour presentation. I'd like to start with the elevator speech for SharePoint. By way of explanation, an elevator speech is, imagine yourself on a elevator in a 30-story high-rise building and the only other person on the elevator with you is the CEO of your company or the head of your division or a potential client. Generally someone you want to impress and say something to them in the short time you have alone with them so that they remember you and you make a good impression upon them. So you are using your elevator speech to sell yourself, to sell your product, to sell your service, to sell your company, to sell your division, to justify your job. Every one of us should have an elevator speech ready. So here goes. SharePoint is an application developed by Microsoft that allows us to rapidly develop websites for an entire organization. You can use SharePoint to create a unique website for every single department within your entire organization. All of your different departments are going to have their own requirements for what they want their website to do. 80% of the requirements from your customers can be handled in SharePoint out of the box from a browser by one of your IT professionals. Creating sites, granting permissions, creating groups of people that have permissions, creating calendars, creating lists, creating libraries, the user look and feel, the branding, all of that can be done in the browser. Now, the 20% that can't be done in the browser, that comes to me. That comes to the custom SharePoint development team within your organization. That's what I live and breathe for, is to customize that 20% of SharePoint, to build an application that one department needs that is far and above what out-of-the-box SharePoint can provide to create an application that the entire organization will rely on to expand the limits of SharePoint and render a fully functioning application. That's the 20%, and that's what everyone in this room today should be interested in doing is providing that 20%. So let's talk about out-of-the-box. Let's say you've been tasked with creating a IT request system for your organization. You don't have a lot of funding for it, and you're supposed to do it the quickest and dirtiest way possible. So you say, okay, I'm going to create a custom list in SharePoint, and then I can expose it to everybody in the organization, and uh, that's how I'm going to meet my requirement. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to create a custom list. We can add whatever fields we want, Right? We can create whatever views we want. We can have views that the customer sees. We have views that the technician sees. Um, we already have 
the ability to view, add, edit, and delete items. That's built into SharePoint. You don't even have to lift a finger and you've got out of the box functionality that normally as a developer, you'd spend days or even weeks building all of these custom forms and the business objects to make it all work together. But that's all provided for you. Of course, all users see all fields and all users see all records. So right away we can see there are some limitations. So here we see my custom list IT requests. See here, pretty straightforward. We have um, your basic fields, request, title, department, category, status, technician, and so forth. Let's go ahead and take a look at the list settings. And again, pretty basic, right? Your average fields. We got about a dozen fields here. We're keeping this example simple. Well, let's go ahead and click on one of these. Here's the out of the box SharePoint, okay? We got request ID. Well, right away we have a problem, right? Because the user's not gonna know what field they're supposed to fill in. They don't know what number comes next. Uh, the title the user gets to enter. We have department, we have category. Those are, um, your basic um, drop downs, right? They're lookup fields. The user gets to pick what department they want, what category they want. They got their justification. We have here the status, it's been submitted, it's been worked, it's on hold, but so forth. The technician who's assigned to it, date assigned, date completed, and comments. So, right off the bat, things that you would notice where this isn't going to work for a large um, organization. You can't trust that the average user isn't going to want to change um, the status and the technician and all that right from the get-go. They'll just assign the work to themselves. Now, one way around this is we can use CSS and we can lock down the, um, the new screen and not show the users the status, the technician, the date completed, and the comments and so forth. And then we only let the users submit a request they won't be allowed to edit them. So on the back end, your IT shop can assign the technician, can change the status from submitted to what have you. And yes, you could use CSS to hide some fields, and you could do some things with that to um, make it a little more functional. But what happens if um, you want to send an email to your technician when, um, when they've been assigned work, but only when they've been assigned the work? Creating an alert in a custom list obviously isn't going to cut it. What if you only want senior IT people assigning the technicians? Well, if all of your technicians have the ability to edit, they're going to be able to edit all the fields. It gets more and more complex. Something else to consider, as you see, we only have 12 fields. And it's still not horrible for the user to fill this out and, and save it. It's nice that you have this built-in edit form, but of course, we want ours to look pretty. What happens if we have 30 or more fields and I only want to show 10 of them at a time? Uh, what if I have a, um, an equipment field with a serial number that I only want to ask if it's germane to the request, right? You'd be scrolling up and down the page, filling out all 30 fields. It'd be really messy. That's why we need to use a custom application. Let's think for a moment about how we can provide that customization. Those of you who work with SharePoint Designer, you're lucky because you have a product named after your job description. In SharePoint Designer, we can create web parts. We can improve the functionality of lists. We can create workflows. We can use CSS and HTML and JavaScript to improve the look and feel of our websites. Basically, we're creating a slightly larger box in which we're operating in SharePoint. But when you really want customization, when you really want a full-blown application, then we're talking about using Visual Studio. We're talking about building applications, building components in C Sharp or VB.net, where you're making custom web parts, event handlers, timer jobs, these get compiled into a WSP, which is then deployed to the backend server. And that's great. I've spent 10 years building custom applications in C Sharp for SharePoint. But in order to do that, 
your IT shop has to own the servers in order to deploy to them. So consider this problem. What if you are working for the Navy and a higher level command owns your SharePoint farm and they manage all of the servers and you as one of the subordinate commands have a site collection and you're a site collection administrator. Are they going to let you deploy WSPs to their servers? No, they're not. Let's say that you work for an organization that uses um, Office 365. SharePoint is being provided to you from Microsoft and you are site collection administrators. Can you build a WSP and deploy it to Office 365 servers? Of course not. Say you're in the boat that I was in. I own um, several websites that I maintain with a um, third party um, hosting company, Apps for rent.com. I'll give them a plug. Um, they're very reasonable with their um, SharePoint sites. Um, I am a site collection administrator. I can do almost anything I want. Is Apps for Rent going to let me deploy a WSP solution to their backend servers? Of course not. So then the question is, what do we do when we're in a situation where WSPs are not an option? This is the end of section one of our video series. In the next section, we will be talking about what is AngularJS, what is a single page application, and what is REST and JSON. Stay tuned.